Welcome divine beings to today's consciousness key in. My name is Lucian St. James. I am a confidence consult, a consciousness coach, and a lifestyle strategist. And I teach people how to become main characters, gods of their reality, because there's nothing you need to become, but there are limits and conditioned programming that we need to unbecome in order to enliven that God consciousness, that ability to tap into pure source, the light being within. And then with that awareness, design the lives that we desire because we can do that, that there's no point in attempting to kill the ego because we need the ego to function. So that's actually what we're gonna be talking about specifically today. I got a question on how do you create lasting change? How do you take the knowingness of the self and what are some practical steps to take that knowledge and become, to take that knowledge and create lasting change? And this is something, I have a background, extensive background working as a mental health and substance use counselor. And this is something, I, you know, I won't say I hear it all the time, but I do hear it. Uh, I hear it every now and again, where an individual comes in and they've been to therapy before, or they've been tapped in, they're watching podcasts, they're reading books, which we're going to get to that. Why there's, there's three, three key points that we're going to outline here today. They're reading books they're They have content creators that they follow, but they just can't seem to make the behavioral change. They can't seem to bring forth the outcomes that they desire to see. They're like, I get it. I know I understand my shadow self. I get why I am the way I am. I get that I might have difficulties that I've experienced in my childhood, uh, more than difficulties, traumas that informed this belief system and this belief system is creating these outcomes and these outcomes are affecting myself, they're affecting my relationships, they're affecting how I am in the world. But with knowing that, what is the next step forward. So how do you take all of this self-knowledge? And if you're watching this, I imagine you have somewhat of a similar background where you, you get it, you get what kind of where, where your uh, challenges are personally, but how do you take that and make it uh, create something with that to unbecome those things? So let's talk about the, the first thing is let's talk about the language of this very first point is that wanting change indicates that you believe there's something wrong with you and that you need to become something else. So first talking about the language and the language and worthiness is really, I mean, if you, if you, <laughs> you want to too long, don't read this, it's worthiness. That's where we're at. That is, that is the core. I'm going to break that down into different points. And those points are going to be uh, more spiritually or not more, they are spiritually oriented. Uh, but that's the issue is worthiness and identity association. So if you're going to too long, don't read this. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, at the core of why you're having difficulty making behavioral change because it doesn't matter how much you know it really doesn't what does matter is what you think of yourself so if i think if i understand okay why i feel like a worthless pos but at the core i still feel that way then anything i try to do to not be a pos is going to be informed with that action and it's just not going to be I, i'm never going to be able to stay because we're talking about paradigms we're talking about associations we're talking about conditioning it doesn't really matter so let's get to it, it let's let's get to it but that's that's the core of it is worthiness the answer there there is an answer and it is worthiness it is what you think of yourself it doesn't matter if you know how you got there, you have to unlearn and you have to unbecome, you have to detach yourself from that identity association of whatever the challenge or the problem is. So wanting change, talking about language, indicates that you think that there's something wrong with you. And the problem is that anything created with the, f anything created with the belief, and that belief is charged with the energy and the understanding. So I uh, notice I didn't say understanding, but understanding, but the inner standing of I'm not good enough, whatever flavor or variety that takes on from you, that is only going to exacerbate and confirm that self-belief. So if you take any actions, let's just say uh, something basic. If you take the action of, I feel like, I should work on my health and I don't like the number that I see on the scale when I step on the scale. I'm not good enough this way. 
anything that you what what that's gonna if it, let's just say that you actually follow through and you do change the behavior but you don't change the identity of i'm not good enough as i am then that number on the scale is not going to matter it's going to get higher it's going to get lower that's going to still be with you and i've watched this happen time and time again people try to change the behavior and they don't change the identity association that they charge that behavior with because that's all we're doing and then so the number on the scale can get lower and lower and lower or can get higher and higher and higher and it's really not going to matter if you feel like I suck, I'm a terrible person, I don't look good. So you have to change, you have to identify what that, that limiting identity understanding, understanding is and work on that because the behaviors come forth from that. And that's assuming that you're even gonna be able to make much progress with that behaviorally, with that identity understanding. Most of the time, if you're feeling like a POS and you know, if you feel like a piece of shit and you keep doing things, you're trying to do things to essentially, uh, I guess, well, yeah, what would be the point in which you wouldn't feel that way? I mean, there's really no end goal there. If the goal is, I don't want to be a piece of shit, then you're not really walking anywhere. You're trying to run away from, you're trying to escape something that you believe about yourself. And you can't really escape what you can believe about, what you believe about yourself. You can work to create new beliefs around your identity. And again, we're going to talk about how identity um, how identity, as, as I've heard it said before, is a wonderful servant and a really terrible master. Um, so it doesn't matter. I mean, I've watched people do this. So you can think of celebrity uh, examples here where it doesn't matter. That scale number goes down and down and down and down and down. And it never is enough because this is not really about the scale number. This is about what you think of yourself. Now, the scale number can in, can help, can contribute to a positive or negative self-understanding. But if that self-understanding, the self-understanding is what it is. You have to work on that and the behaviors spring forth from that. And likely if you've got a negative self-understanding, you're, I mean, you're, how are you going to squeeze positive behavioral outcomes out of a negative self-understanding? Because you are the one doing the behavior. The behavior is coming forth <laughs> through the vessel that is you. And if you believe you're not good enough, then whatever comes forth out of that vessel does not matter. It really does not matter. I've seen, I've watched people uh, that they feel like I'm not going to be good enough until I get a certain dollar amount. I'm not going to be good enough until I have a family. I'm not going to be good enough until I own the house. I'm not going to be good enough until I own, until I have the job. And then they get those things and they realize that I still don't feel good enough. Like while this reward might have lasted for the time that it did, but you know, you get the, the social media congratulations, blah, blah, blah. And then what? Then, then what? Then, then what, what is the next step out of that? And it can be even more defeating to get what you want, think that you need it, and then, and I've, I've done this, that's why I can speak about it, um, to get what you want, think that you need it, and then still be left with that feeling. An example of this for my personal life is I was uh, really just a uh, social nobody in high school. I mean, all the way up into high school, and then high school really was the cherry on top of all of that. So I decided that I was going to reinvent myself in high school. I decided that, and I didn't really know anything about like self-help or identity or uh, spiritual. I wasn't spiritually educated. I wasn't religiously educated even. And I, I had really no formal education outside of the school system on these things and what music had taught me. And I've learned so much from music and lyrics and poetry. And what, so what art had told me, I learned a lot from what art had told me. And I decided I was gonna reinvent myself. I was like, I'm done with this. I'm done feeling like a loser. I'm done not having any friends. I'm done not getting invited. I'm gonna create this new character. I'm gonna create a bombastic, uh, charismatic, well-dressed, sociable person. And it took about three years from age like 17 to 20 for that to really come into fruition for, you know, for, for me to really start seeing the results of this new identity. And I went from, you know, not having any friends, not having anyone, not, not having lasting, romantic relationships, hating myself, to having friendships, to having somewhat lasting relationships. I would say, yeah, at that point in time, lasting relationships. Uh, having had uh, some uh, several <laughs> sexual encounters, a few romantic encounters, um, and really getting everything that I wanted. I was a radio DJ, so I went from like being so afraid to even talk at all because the household that I grew up in did not encourage self-expression. Um, and so I really got to bring forth that love of art and music and the station was like known around and I would get stopped at the grocery store. It's kind of like a small town celebrity felt really good every time I got that validation. 
and I still hated myself. So I got everything that I thought that I needed and I still hated myself because I did all of those things charged with the energy and the understanding and the understanding that I'm not good enough. So I changed my wardrobe, I changed my hair, I changed everything about who I was. I got everything I thought that like, okay, people that like themselves have relationships, they have friends, they have hobbies, they have things that they do, they're known, they're validated, they're liked, they talk and move a certain way. And I still hated myself. So number one is anything is knowing, I'm going to repeat this, that when you want to change, you're assuming that something is wrong with you. And anything that you bring forth out of that understanding, any behaviors that you bring forth out charged with that energy, so you have to be very intentional about the understanding and the energy that you charge your behaviors with and be, to be aware of that. So that's where the self-knowledge comes into play. Because if you're charging it with I hate myself, so I'm going to make this change because I need to become something else in order to feel a certain way, then, you, then you've then you already lost. You're going to arrive if you get there. A lot of times, as I said, you, you know, you're going to be feeling so negatively about yourself. These behavioral changes are going to be hard to sustain, but let's assuming that you sustain it, it will not, it's, it's not going to bring forth what you're seeking because what you're seeking is not the behavioral outcomes, it's the feelings and the, the, it's the feelings and the vitality, the sense of life, the sense of movement, the sense of freedom that those things are going to bring to you. So that brings us to point number two, ego awareness. So the ego is the self. And when I say the self, I mean the lowercase self. And if you haven't heard anything about that, look that up on Google, lowercase self versus uh, uppercase self. But you are not your ego. You're not your ego. Your ego, however, then, so if you were to imagine like the ego is right here and source consciousness and all that is, is, is here. But what this does is this blocks out source consciousness. This, this here blocks out the everything. It blocks out all that is and filters it. But the 3D, so we need, we can't, you know, you hear people talk about killing their ego. Um, I do think that there are death and rebirth phases. However, you cannot kill your ego. You need your ego to experience and maneuver this 3D reality that we live in. The ego the, that we have, the lowercase self that we have, the lens of experience we have is our preferences, is our ideas, is our assumptions, is our uh, beliefs, um, are the notions that we have, is, is our way of experiencing the world. It's the collection of all the things that we believe are us. It's your avatar. It's your character. Uh, the ego is the mind of your meat suit. Uh, but it is not you. So it is what you need. It is, uh, you need the ego, you need like, you know, glasses essentially to see in the 3D world to make sense of things, to have a body, to have a mind, to have ideas, to be able to talk and communicate. But that ego is not you. And behind the ego is everything that is, is the universe. You are an entire universe within yourself operating within the multiverse of selves on this plane, on this 3D plane that we are all experiencing. You are a light being fractal of the source divine. You are everything. You are everything that is. And you're living through the lens that everything, that God that created you, the God that you are, the God that is, is living through the lens of the ego. So you have to understand that, that you are not your ego. Again, that that is the ideas and preferences and beliefs and assumptions and the experiences the collection of experiences that you've had. So when you are aware of that, that's when you can start playing with all of this. If you understand that you're the creator of the game, then you can start programming what you want your character to look like, to feel like, the experiences that you want to have. Because again, we can't do away with this ego, but it is not, it should, the ego should not be the master. The ego is the servant and you should absolutely have fun with that servant and with with that creation of identity but what we're largely living in and most of us are somebody else's creation somebody else told me you know i was i was worthless i would never be anything that i'm just i'm just a statistic i'm just a number i'm just i'm just making things up people hear that that i'm this that i'm that that i'm you know that i'm not fill in the blank enough 
uh, my parents said, you know, the parents said, you know, you'll, you'll never make it or this runs in our family. You're definitely, you're going to have this genetic disorder because this runs in our family. People are telling you who you are and what to believe. And each time that you internalize one of those beliefs, you add an inner standing to your ego. And because that ego is the lens through which the God consciousness is living through, you then believe that that's true. So you have to understand that you are not the ego you are not this you are not the mind you're not the collection of these things that you experience you are the experiencer of them <laughs> the ego is helping you experience this world but you are not those experiences you are not those beliefs you are not those assumptions so there's nothing that you need to become because you are all that is the problem is that what you have become are all the things that you don't want because there's been no intention there's been no guidance it's been no direction there's been just kind of aimless whoever is telling me the next thing about how i should believe you know the government saying oh the the next disease is x y and z and you have it if you're if you're you know if you, you have this next disease if you have hair on your legs and uh you know if your eyes sometimes blur at night, well, then all of society is like, oh gosh, I'm sick because the government told you that you're sick now because you have these basic things. There's something wrong with you. And we quite literally then start creating these experiences in our body. Or somebody told you in fourth grade that your handwriting was terrible. So you never tried to actually correct your handwriting. You never tried to have to, to, to work on your penmanship because you believe that then became a part of the way that you experience this universe. But you are the universe. You are the creation of all things. And that's the negative side of things. That's the shadow side of things. And that is the light side of things. And that is everything in between. So there's nothing that you need to become. You need to unbecome. The goal, the task is to unbecome the attachment to all of the things that represent what is not desired. And when I say unattached, it doesn't mean that you don't experience them. It means that they are not a part of your understanding and your understanding of who you are. That's what that means. It means that okay that you know there was a reflection in my reality of somebody who called me something that i don't believe about myself what that means is that i am carrying that belief about me and that i can unlearn that and that i can release that and that i can let that go because i don't prefer that to be a part of my experience and i'm certainly not going to allow that person's thought to infiltrate me to internalize it and then become that thing and then become the the, the remnants of that thing you know talking about uh, body image for instance there's one creator that i follow on tiktok and she's a female entrepreneur helps other women you know uh, get started that way and she's a mom and she talks a lot about her life and she talked about how she was programmed growing up that you know poor health habits and uh you know the accumulation of mass uh by way of fat stored trying to say this as politically correct as i can that that's just a gene that that family has so that she should never really plan on liking herself or having a positive sense of self because this just runs in the family and she said that for years and years and years this controlled who i was but then I worked to understand that that was a belief and that once I understood that that belief did not belong to me, that it belonged to the generations of my family understanding and that their beliefs continue to inform the actions that allowed them to continue experiencing the same experience, to continue experiencing poor health because they believed that they were unhealthy. She's like, once I identified all that, she's like, I was able to step out of it and I wasn't working against myself. Because if you're trying to, for instance, I'm going to eat healthy because this runs in my family. If you keep affirming that, again, you're working against your self-understanding. So you want to change that self-understanding. You want to understand that all of the things happening outside of you, that you can choose what thoughts that you want to entertain and that you do not have to entertain and become and internalize and live out the assumptions of another person although everyone in your reality is is a reflection of you in one way but you do not have to internalize those assumptions we we are living with the internalizations of our parents most of us and living with what they believe is right and wrong and suffering because of it so you are already everything that there is but reliance on 3d circumstances and the mask of the ego will never affirm that for you the ego is not does not believe it is everything the ego believes it is all of the limits and all of the assumptions and even even on the positive end if you have to if you believe i used to believe an example of this is that you, that i'm a smart person that i'm an intelligent person Okay, well, that ego assumption is going to put me, has put me in a place of extreme insecurity because now I'm always fighting and clasping to that 
assumption of myself. If somebody else comes along and they appear to be smarter than me or they appear to know more things on a specific topic, well, now, now I'm threatened. So while this ego belief about who I am is a positive thing, now it is working against me because there are all these limits that I have around who I believe that I can be. So somebody else comes along and says X, Y, and Z, and I'm like, wow, they're really smart. Well, now I feel not smart. So you don't want to have, I mean, you, you know, you, you want to understand, you know, you cannot get rid of the ego, but you want to be very intentional about what you're building it with and what's there and where it came from. And to always be, you know, the, the human experience is a negotiation between God consciousness, the fact that you are a light, bring, light being, divine fractal of all that is living in a 3D experience driven by an ego. And it is a constant negotiation of that, but you are all that is. You don't need to become anything. You need to unbecome the limits that you have, uh, have, that you have applied to yourself. And number three, now that was ego awareness. This is more ego identity. So this is where you get to play with this a bit more. When you believe that you are all of the lies of the ego, especially I'm talking more so on the negative end, if you believe all the lies that the ego tells you, and again, back to that grasping and clinging and attaching the validity of past experiences, the thing is, and I'm gonna make another video on this, uh, but I wanted to get to this one first, is that you can't actually really be afraid of anything that hasn't happened yet because it hasn't happened yet you have no there there are general patterns in the world yes and i can even talk on a neuro uh, chemical basis as to why we can perceive certain patterns but you cannot be afraid of something that hasn't happened yet but what you do have are past experiences your brain is just one big recorder it just, it just it's just a recorder of experiences so you can't be afraid of something that's never happened yet so our brain is attached to all of these or the ego rather of the mind is attached to all of these past experiences and it's using those past experiences to infer and inform what we believe is going to happen in the present so then at that point in time we're kind of just like you know living on repeat we're just continuing to this happened before it's gonna happen again i got dumped before i'm gonna i'm gonna get dumped again because i'm not worthy and i i have that sense that i'm not worthy is informed by all these past experiences that I have applied and attached to myself because I believe that that's what I am. So now I'm having to ask, well, what do I need to change about myself to be unworthy? Like all of that is what needs to be modified and released and altered. So understanding that your ego is your identification with the world, you cannot really necessarily get rid of that. I mean, I am always saying in all my videos, there is no self. But obviously, there is an avatar that's talking to you that you spawned into your environment named Lucian St. James that has a job title as a confidence consult and a consciousness uh, coach. And I'm here talking to you like those are things that, yes, are happening on the 3D basis, but that is all. So when you choose to see yourself, when you identify yourself, we talked about ego awareness is number two, when you identify yourself as the creator, and you understand that the self, whatever you identify as, that, th that those are just things you can apply to yourself if you choose to. That all the things in your reality, they do not have to be through the lens of some negative stuff that happened 10 years ago that you can create the lens because the lens is created anyway. I mean, that is the moral of this story that if you are believing you're unworthy or that you're not fill in the blank enough and that's why you're trying to figure out how to change, how do I take this knowledge of myself and change? It is because you are holding on to an identity that affirms the fact that you need to change in the first place. Now, if you desire new behavioral outcomes, if you desire new experiences, if you're experiencing, I'm not saying that, okay, well, because that's the next question is if, if there, if there, if I am everything, then why do I need to, to do anything? Why, why get up in the morning? Why try anything? Because that's then if you don't do anything, that's then going to continue to create an experience you don't want to have. So there, and if you notice the language that I'm using here is very neutral as well. So if you're experiencing a life and outcomes that you don't, that you don't desire, Understand your role as a creator, you created that. And I'm not saying this with any sense of fault. I'm saying this to empower you, for you to understand that the circumstances are not creating these things for you, these emotional outcomes for you. That other people, the government, that your parents not create these things for you. They provided opportunities for experience that you decided over and over and over again to keep pressing yes on. So you can stop pressing yes 
on the identity assumptions that affirm and it, it, the, the identity assumptions that affirm an experience that you no longer wish to have. So what does this look like practically? If you are experiencing an outcome of relationships that continue to fail and you are thinking that I need to change something about myself in order to stop having these failed relationships, you don't need to change anything about yourself. You need to, uh, you need to understand and identify the points about yourself and the the ego beliefs the egoistic beliefs that have led you down a direction of a cycle of unhealthy and or failed relationships there's something about you that is affirming the belief that you need to continue to entertain individuals that keep hurting you that's what's happening there. You don't need to change anything. You need to understand where have I been creating limits in my assumption of who I am that allows me to believe that I need to tolerate BS in order to be loved. And furthermore, why do I believe that somebody else needs to love me in order for me to experience love? Getting to that. It's not that you need to do anything differently. Now, the behavioral outcomes, yes, will be a result of a new egoistic identity understanding but that there are always limits there so you should always be working to unlearn what's not working to maximize the benefits of what is working to understand yourself as a god consciousness as the all that is and continue living continue playing continue loving continue climbing continue maximizing this experience that you have but unworthiness at, like at its core, fear that I'm not. Tony Robbins says, I think there's two fears that all people have that, you know, are pretty much the prime targets for all of the negative behavioral outcomes, all of the negative circumstances that we encounter. Fear that I'm not going to be good enough. And if I'm not good enough, it's fear that I'm not enough and fear that if I'm not enough, I won't be loved. So how do I create lasting change? Like, here's the thing. You don't need this last thing I'll end with. You don't need the how to. If you want to lose weight, you know how to do that. Research weight loss plans online. <laughs> if you want more friends, you can Vanessa Van Edwards, scienceofpeople.com, how to socialize. If you want more money, there's a million, a million different things that you can do. You know, business plans, online, crypto, get a different job, save more money, whatever. Like there, you know, Dave Ramsey, you know, the boomer, like you should stop buying your avocado toast and then you'll be able to buy a house. <laughs> you don't need a how to you do not need the this is you know what what can i practically do like i mean i could you know if we could schedule a one on one and i'll say this that any time i'm ever talking to a busy mother who says i don't have time to care for me never are we talking about time management we are talking about her identity assumption as a mother that has consumed all of her life so much to the point that she doesn't think of herself as a self she doesn't think of herself as a woman or whatever gender she might identify as she's not thinking of herself as a person so she thinks that she doesn't even have time for a 15 minute meditation session she's thinking she doesn't have time to go to the gym she's thinking she doesn't have time to prepare healthy meals because she's not thinking of herself as a self that needs anything at all so we're never talking about time management so you don't need a how to you know what to do you you know it is not difficult to figure out what to do to create new things if you want to look better find some clothes dress better if you don't know what to do um gosh what is it if you don't know what to buy i think it's something called like thread fix or there's thread thread sh shred or there's there's these these uh different boxes you can get it's like hello fresh but it's like for clothes you can you can thread beast i don't know what it is but i might have even just named three different ones but you can you don't know how to dress you can online, you know, trending styles for, which I don't like trends, but trending styles for whatever your gender association is. You don't need a how-to. What you do need is to unlearn the understanding and the egoistic limitations that have taught you that you're already not what you want to be. Now, yes, there will be some degree of modification in the way that you're showing up in your life. Absolutely. You're not going to get different results with the same actions. But what I see people do is they look for, you know, they, th they think that there's a magic pill. They think that there's a magic answer that there's just one thing they need to do or one hack or one skill or something that they're missing that is keeping them from engaging in initiative and consistency and discipline and love and it's not that you need to force discipline yourself 
to do something else. And if you already believed that you were the evidence of that thing that you wanted to become, you wouldn't have to discipline yourself. You don't have to discipline yourself to do bad things or to do the things that you know are not already serving you, but they're familiar enough because they have, because under that familiarity is the identity assumption of beliefs of who I am. So if you learn that I can craft that, that yes, the ego, I have to operate with the ego because the, the ego is how I experience this world, but rather than that ego affirming all of these negative things that are not serving me, I can charge that ego with the intention that I am all that is. So yes, you do have to determine what it is specifically that you want to do. You're responding to the initial question that, well, how do you change? Well, you know, you know what to do. I mean, and if you don't know what to do, I would like to invite you to book a free low trip lifestyle strategy session. Uh, we can talk about what specifically is going on, what challenges you're having in your identity and your understanding and your spirituality, how to become the main character, because that's what I teach people to do is how to become the main character, how to embody main character energy with the understanding that you, this is all made up. <laughs> this is all made up. So if it's all made up, make it up in a way that, that benefits you rather than continuing to live in the made up scenarios that other people created for you or that other people initiated it however many years ago and that you're just you know stuck living in that mental poverty of something that you didn't create and that you don't know how to uncreate because you're not sure where it came from that's what I help people to do on a coaching basis most consistently but you can always contact me here drop comments if you have questions join the illuminated leads consciousness community that is my newsletter that is my community where again you have direct access to me and we talk specifically about these types of topics on energy management and spiritual understanding becoming the main character self-confidence self-esteem there is no self we talk about that there and with that, I will be signing off of this video. I will catch you tomorrow for the consciousness key in. Thank you for watching and make sure to like, subscribe, and follow if this was of any benefit to you. And remember, there are coaching packages available. Definitely click the link, check those out.